off today and welcome back to Weekend Edition. This is Rehash, where we recap the big stories of the weekend. I gotta say, this was a very, very busy news week. So let's start off with you, Issa. Okay, definitely a very busy news week, especially in my department, which is um, education. So we had 10 bomb threats as of Friday over the past two weeks. Uh, so the latest ones were on Friday at Southern High School at Guam High on, um, on the Naval Base and also at Inner Ohana Middle School. So the same thing applies to these. If you know any information about these crimes, please call Guam Crime Stoppers at 477-HELP. There is a $1,000 prize or reward for anyone who provides information that leads to an arrest. It and, is absolutely crazy. Yeah. People on Twitter, people on Facebook, and I guess that's where I come in because people had all sorts of opinions from being shocked to being absolutely frustrated the students were then you know they were posting pictures they were taking videos mm -hmm. themselves standing outside in the heat of course mm -hmm. friday it started raining mm -hmm. they were just absolutely tired of this mm -hmm. and i had a piece of the pie here too as well i went to southern high school and i interviewed the sba president you know it's it's they're losing out not on just valuable class time but on all their activities after school events mm -hmm. the sports any fundraisers they can't plan anything if if these kind of bomb threats continue and take away from the, the time they spent in the ca campus. Yeah. So it was hot. It outside. was hot. It was hot. And, and so <laughs> that was just one of the big frustrations we had. I mean, on top of all these bomb threats, there was all this going on at GMH. Yeah. Um, as you say, uh, GMH was also very prominently in the news <laughs> along with the Department of Education. Um, it started off with the Guam Power Authority and the Guam Waterworks Authority saying that, you know, um, you owe us some money, so about over a million bucks, and uh, you need to pay your utility bills. And so um, that kind of triggered a, a bunch of different fronts. Um, the legislature, um, Vice Speaker B.J. Cruz, came up with a bill to appropriate um, about $1.1 million to cover the bills, um, and the legislature passed that. The Speaker um, waive the um, public hearing requirement so that they can entertain and pass a bill on that day. Uh, the governor also um, took action. I think um, he uh, uh, afterward was able to negotiate a payment plan with the Guam Memorial Hospital, paying a certain amount and then paying uh, the balance over a couple of uh, different months. Um, so that happened and also uh, we spoke with uh, Senator Dennis Rodriguez who took a, another approach, which was to provide the um, cash strap hospital with a little bit of relief uh, in that um, those vendors or med medical service providers that are waiting for payment, they can um, offset uh, their uh, business privilege taxes. Um, instead of waiting for the, the payments, they, they can offset it um, through um, a program that um, his bill um, would uh, uh, establish. So. Uh, a lot of different ways to, to help out <laughs> but the safe hospital. safe to say yeah. everyone is committed to keeping the power and water yeah. on at the yeah. hospital. And what's crazy is because, of course, you know, we are live streaming right now. Many of you are probably watching this live over the Internet, so half a day from Guam. But <laughs> many people, like, you know, because the world is such a small place now because of connectivity and social media and the Internet, a lot of former Guamanians who, you know, always have the island in their heart, they're saying, you know, what is going on back there? Yeah. So they're, they're beyond frustrated at this point. Well, it, it, it's clear, one way or the other, the hospital's bills will be paid and the power and water will remain on. And this is in addition to the new policy at the hospital as well. I, I mean, I wrote that story last week where the new year, new policy relative to how insurance is paid. Correct. Yes, yeah, so how the vendors are paid off. Um, as for myself, I spent a lot of time in court, especially on Friday, started early morning with uh, the sentencing for Keith Jermaine Garrido. If you remember, he is the man accused of killing an elderly woman in her home. He beat her to death, stole eight bucks from her purse, and then ran off and crashed her car. And then shortly after, he ran away from uh, prison, from a prison vehicle, and then he attacked another woman and tied her up and beat her. And so I, I sat in on that court hearing to tell you it's, I, there's not a dry eye in sight. I think even myself and our cameraman were like struggling to hold back our tears. But you know, he said sorry, but it's a little too late for that. He was sentenced to life behind bars with the possibility of parole in 25 years. Keith Garrido is in his early 20s, so he'll, be po he'll have the possibility of parole when he's about 50. So that puts everything in perspective. Another interesting story was, uh, you ever check how like the authenticity of your notes, your doctor's notes? Um, like, when you ever fake like sending your parent permissions with like my my child uh, was sick because well, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no, no, we've never done that. So we'll never we want to admit to it here on the news desk, but. Um, the alleged victim in the Paul Santos case, Paul Santos is a former GPD officer accused of rape, and he's accused of using his power as a, as a cop to, against actually, against a woman who says that 
he raped her and then threatened to use his power as a cop to put her behind bars for prostitution. Turns out that she forged a letter, she or her husband, or her husband, forged a letter, a doctor's note. And so she is pregnant, not with Paul Santos's baby, but she is pregnant at this point, and she faked a letter saying she couldn't travel back to Guam for the trial because she'd be in her third trimester pregnancy. Very, very scandalous. For more on that story, you can log on to any of our social media sites. If you want us to cover anything, if you're interested maybe in that possible UFO story we did this week too. Which mm -hmm. was pretty crazy too. Yeah. A lot of kids weighing their opinion on Twitter, uh -huh. so make sure to check that out. <laughs> so any, any more on our stories, you can check out our social media sites, our Facebook, our Instagram. We are everywhere. Our website, if you want us to cover anything, email us at reporters at kuam.com.